Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about my three favourite lenses for wildlife that I currently own. There's obviously going to be better ones out there, ones that are potentially more suited to the type of wildlife photography that you do. But these are my three favourite I own and I've used for a long term period now. One of them is slightly sneaking out on the left hand side here, but we'll uh, talk about them all individually in more detail now. So let's start with number three. Number three is my 70-200 f2.8 IS Mark I. This is a lens, everyone needs a 70-200 in their life. It's super useful, um, super fast, versatile. I've used this for motorsport, I've used it at weddings, I've used it for wildlife and used it at zoos. It's a lens that every photographer should have in their kit no matter what they do. And it's something you can just pull upon as and when you need it. This is the Mark I, as I say. Still absolutely fine with even the R7, the more modern stuff. I have no issues with any compatibility with this lens. It works as good as the day it was new. This cost me less than £400 to buy. So for an IS f2.8, there is nothing better price-wise for the quality you get um, on this lens here. What we'll do is we'll look at a few example photos from this lens. You can see exactly how good this lens is and there's also a link down below to a more in-depth review of this lens that I've done. So guys the first photo we got here is of a squirrel monkey and her baby. Um, this is taken very low light through a window but you can see that the baby's eyes perfectly in focus and um, exactly what you'd want from a, a nice sort of do-it-all lens like a 70 to 200 so really good sort of showing of what you can do with low light with that lens for sure. The next photo is probably one of my favourite photos from the whole of 2022 but this is a Namir leopard um, in the snow walking towards me. Annoyingly eye line obviously looking to the left rather than straight at me but still I think a very picturesque um, photo as the Amir leopard is from a more colder climate and you wouldn't be able to tell from that photo that the animal was actually in the zoo. You think it was more potentially in its natural habitat. So again super sharp great depth of field and um, gives you a good quality photo. Number two is my 500mm f4 um, IS. This was my first um, big prime lens I bought. I'd had uh, 300mm f2.8 before um, and mainly just zoom stuff so I had the Sigma 150 to 600 Sport um, and I had a few other little lenses from that point here but this is my first big lens purchase. This was three and a half thousand pounds so it was most money I'd ever spent as well on a lens second hand and it was a big leap of faith in what this was going to do and what the quality was going to be but all I can say is almost two years on I'm more than happy with what the quality of photo I've got from this lens is it's very weighty being the mark one but it just makes up for it in amazing image quality amazing low light capability um, I can get shutter speeds that you just dreamed of when I had the 150 to 600 just because been a shoot at f4. Um, set up in camo at the moment because I'll be doing a little bit more wildlife stuff in my spare time but I tend to just have it in white when I'm at zoos which you don't really need camo when you're at zoos it's a little bit pointless but you can pick these up now for less than two thousand pounds which is mind-boggling like I if I was doing it all again and they were two thousand less than two thousand pounds. I'd buy one instantly. Um, this even for three, this was an incredible purchase for me and one of my most enjoyable lenses to own. What we'll do is we'll look at a few photos from this lens, and you can sort of see yourself um, how good the image quality is on this. Again, works absolutely fine with the R7 as well. Because people keep asking me that, does it work well with that? No problems at all. Um, but great purchase, and really happy to own this lens and have it in my collection. Okay, so this photo is of a red panda with his tongue sticking out there. Um, taking an F4, shooting upwards as well into a bit of light. But you can see the sharpness of the head there, that's where the focus point was on the eye. And because it's F4 you get a slightly better, deeper depth of field than you would obviously with a 2.8. So you get a little bit more of, like say, the tongue's in focus, the nose in focus too, but you've got the background and the foreground nicely out of focus there. So it works very, very well. Okay, so the next one here is a, 
a baby in the hoist monkey with its mother. I've done this photo just to show you basically what depth of field you can get from the F4. So you can see the baby is totally in focus because it's focused on its eyes there. And the mother is ever so slightly out of focus. So the attention is then drawn to the baby. But you have got a more family element in there because you can still see the parents in the background. But you can see how sharp that lens is still and the great depth of field you can get from the lens too. So my favorite lens that I currently own is probably predictable with people who know me but this is the 300mm f2.8 this is the mark one super sharp lens by far one of the sharpest lenses they made the mark ii is ever so slightly sharper and i think the mark ii 400 is probably a little bit sharper too but the image quality you can get from this in low light is just unmatched you've got such a large front element it lets in so much light um, you've got that f2.8 stop down, so you get amazing bokeh and depth of field. And it's my go-to lens. If I feel like I don't want to carry the 500mm around me, I'll take this lens and the times 2 converter. And I've got a very hand-holdable 600mm f5.6, which is incredible to, to have. And even the image quality with that converter, absolutely amazing. I've never had any issues whatsoever with anything like that. So this is by far my favourite lens. Um, and I'm super, again, happy to own one of these. You can get these for less than £2,000 now. Um, I paid uh, a couple of years back just over two and a half. So they haven't come down massively, but for less than two grand, you can't get a better lens, in my opinion, at the moment. The 400 mils are over £4,000 for a good quality one. Um, and you want to get a good quality one because these Mark I lenses you can't service anymore with Canon. So you need to make sure you get a good quality one. No scratches on the front elements. Um, pretty clean looking. It doesn't look like it's been dropped or anything like that. No, no cracked um, sort of screens or anything on there. That's what you need to be looking for with these because you can't repair them um, very easily anyway. So you want to make sure you get something that's going to last. And so I've had this for a couple of years. No problems at all with um, the workings of it. It's not failed me at all yet. I do want to upgrade this to the Mark II. Um, just more for serviceability and stuff like that and just to see and compare I can do a video then to compare the differences between the two lenses and if there is a quality difference between the two lenses too but let's look at some photos I've taken on this lens and there's also a more in-depth review of this lens in the link below okay so the next one we look at is a Lima here I love this photo because it just shows off incredibly what the f2.8 can do but Lima's looking straight at me, I'm focused dead on the eyes and anything past the eyes backwards really and even slightly the ears are slightly out of focus um, but the web background is completely blurred out, it's completely blown out from it being at f2.8 and just draws your eye straight to the eyes of the Lima so I think it's a great um, show off of what the lens can do. Now the last photo here I've done as just almost like to sort of show you what the 300mm is capable of. This is obviously a um, snake up in a tree but this is a 300 mil in almost like a macro situation I'm still fairly far back obviously because of the minimum focus distance of the 300 mil but it shows you you still can get a super sharp image at an angle through glass up into the light and I've obviously focused in on the face of the snake here but it's still completely in focus you've got a nice fade out of the um, textures and stuff like that so it blurs out very neatly through out the photo towards the back and your eyes again drawn to the, the head of the snake itself so I overall I think it's um, a really good sort of showing of what the lens is physically capable of you don't have to necessarily just use it for outdoor wildlife you can use it for indoor um, indoor sort of almost macro close-up stuff too if you really really wanted to so guys that was my three favorite wildlife lenses that I personally own there are as I said at the start there's going to be other lenses people might prefer the 800 mil depending if they're out in the arctic more and that's the lens that they'll use primarily or an RF 1200 mil now with that one being more readily available um, or there's people who are going to do more macro work so will prefer the 100 mil or the 105 mil from Sigma potentially rather than these longer lenses that I use here there are lenses that are going to be coming this year, so I'm hoping to get a 200-400 with the inbuilt converter. I'm just waiting for the um, the RF version to launch before I sort of put my money down on one of those because I feel when the RF one's going to 
launched, then some of those EF1s will come into the market at a little bit of a lower price just because people will be upgrading. So that's something that will be coming at some point. It's a lens I'm very excited about. And um, potentially next time I do this video next year, that might be replacing one of the lenses I've got here in the top three. But that's my top three. What's your top three lenses? Let me know in the comments down below. And I will catch you guys later for more content. Please subscribe, please like, as you guys always do. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.